We have become used to thinking of the United Nations as a benevolent, peace-loving, completely neutral organisation, popping up wherever there is trouble and strife to put things right. Whenever nations are squabbling, the UN steps in to mediate like a parent between naughty kids. We think of them as being completely trustworthy, impartial, and making just pronouncements by which the nations promise to abide. No one really examines this overarching body. The way to think of the UN is like a smartphone. When you get your smartphone, it doesn't do much by itself. What you have to do to make it useful is download applications or apps. If you want to use it for directions, you download a navigation app. If you want to calculate tips, then you get a tip calculation app. If you want to tune your guitar with it, you get a guitar tuning app. And if you want to watch YouTube videos, then you get a YouTube app. Similarly, the United Nations has various apps called non-governmental organizations, or NGOs, which take care of every aspect of daily life around the globe. They have an app or NGO for everything, from health to the economy, education, climate, food production, etc., etc. In that respect, they have their hooks in every single area of life around the world. Their food and agriculture organization has a world food plan. The World Health Organization has a World Health Plan. UNESCO has a World Literacy Plan. The International Labour Organization has a World Employment Plan. And the UN Industrial Development Organization has a World Industry Plan. UN demographers provide population forecasts for the next 100 years. And the World Meteorological Organization provides climate forecasts for the next several hundred years. They have an app for everything, a plan for every part of our lives. Now, if the UN was indeed just a neutral, benevolent, peace-loving organization, we may not have much to be concerned about. But it isn't. It has a specific agenda that drives everything it does, and that agenda, as usual, is driven by spiritual beliefs. Everything they do, everything they promote, flows out of that spirituality. If we look at the UN, do we therefore see the giveaway symbols, ideas, and terminology that has characterized the mysteries throughout history? Do we see evidence of the hidden hand that has guided those mysteries from the beginning of time? Well, if we take a look at the UN logo here, I think we will. You will notice that this is a circle with an crescent, which is the ancient symbol of the joining of sun and crescent moon. Here is an ancient Hittite stone in which we can see virtually the same symbol with the laurel wreath and the crescent moon beneath it. In Greece, a laurel wreath around someone's head depicted a deity, kind of like how Catholics put halos around heads in their pictures to depict a holy person. So in the Olympic Games, for example, which was born in Greece, when you see athletes having laurel wreaths placed on their heads on the podium, this signifies that they have become immortal in their victory, as gods. Julius Caesar also picked up on this idea and wore a laurel wreath around his head. So the laurel wreath around the planet may also have a pantheistic element of deifying the earth. Now let's take a look at one of the apps or NGOs the UN set up for spirituality, the Temple of Understanding. The Temple of Understanding was founded in 1960 and Jean Houston, a New Age guru and supporter of the temple, wrote in her book Trojan Horse, the temple's purpose is to facilitate the one world religion through the promoting of both the acceptance and the embrace of all religions, beliefs and rituals. The Temple of Understanding's meditation room was to be known as the Hall of Illumination, where the Illuminati, masters of wisdom, or leaders of the Temple of Understanding will train the public in the new humanistic cult to create a new type of mystic. Included in its membership have been the likes of Hugh Thant and Eleanor Roosevelt, and it has set up chapters all over the world. Its headquarters are in the largest cathedral in the world, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. Don't be fooled by the Christian-sounding name. It's a terrible place. Its building was partly funded by the Grand Master of the Masons of New York and featured on the front page of the Masonic World magazine in 1925. Amongst other things, it is notorious for displaying a female Christ figure and was one of the first to promote the ordination of homosexual clergy in the 1970s. It is a stronghold for several other occult organizations and New Age philosophies. As the mother institution of the New Age movement in the United States, its goal is to eclipse what they call the Age of Pisces with the Age of Aquarius. That's the astrological way of talking about the move from the modern era into the postmodern era that we looked at earlier.
This building also has links with the cult of the People's Temple that was started by Jim Jones and which ended in mass murder. Every year at Halloween, this Masonic Temple Cathedral hosts a ceremony called the Grand Procession of the Ghouls, in which demons, ghouls and monsters walk through the sanctuary to macabre organ music. Here we also see a pagan coven engaging in a ceremony dedicated to Lucifer called Lucia. The Temple of Understanding has full UN accreditation and has been a key NGO in the spiritual department of the United Nations. Twelve individuals listed as directors or advisors of the Temple of Understanding are also members of the UN's Global Forum Councils. Those forums have in the past welcomed numerous speakers who've openly supported a neo-pagan world religion. James Lovelock, for example, said that Gaia was the giver of life and had the capacity to heal herself, but that humans were cancers or parasites to this goddess Gaia, an illness too overwhelming for her to heal herself. Al Gore has also been a guest several times at the Cathedral of St John the Divine, where he hinted at a pantheistic worldview saying that God is not separate from the earth. Another member of the Board of Directors of the Temple of Understanding is Thomas Berry. He openly stated his belief that the world is being called to a new, post-denominational, even a post-Christian belief system that sees the earth as a living being, with mankind as her consciousness. Madeleine Langle, one of the Temple of Understanding's founders, gave courses inside the Temple of St. John the Divine, initiating worshippers into shamanism, out-of-body experiences, astral projection, the tarot, fortune-telling, psychic powers, yoga, sexual magic, astrology, abortion, and especially earth worship. This is the spirituality at the core of the United Nations, and the one it promotes around the world. They want the New World Order to be built on this kind of paganism, the whole world under the mystery religion. And we'll look more at this in the next few parts.